<laughs> oh, look, I still have a screen region up here. My bad. Sorry. Boom. There you so go. unprofessional. So crappy. I know. Okay, get it together. Welcome to another <laughs> Waystone Games. Uh, I, I can't find my words either. Welcome to another Waystone Games live stream developer playtest. I am Brad Pluto Ramey, the assistant community manager, joined by the. Uh, is this flannel? What is this? Is what are it? you wearing? I don't think so. Who are you wearing today, Dips? <laughs> well, <laughs> what you is that? see, I'm wearing a shirt that I found. <laughs> that I found on the street. <laughs> right. Because um, Hobo Dibs is with us. <laughs> I killed a man for it. <laughs> I wish he was kidding, but he's probably not. Because uh, he does live in San Francisco, and he's probably murdered a few homeless people yes. in his lifetime. Uh, Dan, homeless man murderer Dibs Gibson over here with us. Uh, our lead shape designer here at Waste on Games. And he's going to be playing the newest shaper, Coggin. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you want to hit game cam, we should be able to switch. I do. Boom. Now Boom. I got to get this. Get that sweet, sweet ward skin. Sentinel's author of the Shield of Falkrent. Um, I like that. I like Sentinel's. I like the glow on Sentinel's. The glow is nice. It's really cool. And how it kind of bobs. It's got good bob. You like that A bob? lot of them have good bob, actually. This little, like, wing true. bob. The, the I do like Northern Insight because of the, like, owl sound. The hoo Ooh. when you play it. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Yep. Anyway... What Let's we're going to be showing off today in this developer playtest, as we usually do, is some fantastic, fingers crossed, hopefully, uh, gameplay from Dibs here <laughs> on Jungle Coggin. Coggin is the newest shaper to enter the Dawn Gate. He is now 20. 25? Are you 25 shapers? Yeah, I think we're at 25. We're there. We started with 12 shapers. Yeah. Back in May. It's been almost a year, and we're up. We've doubled the roster, essentially. So, yep. um, Coggin is a <coughs> tank, um, and he's the first shaper in the game to have a hook which is really exciting. I know people have been talking about hooks. They've been talking about stealth. They've been talking about, you know, multi-unit control, micro, all that kind of stuff. And the hook shaper right here for Coggin is the first one of, uh, of many cool things to come down the line. So let them marvel at that awesome at that awesome uh, model and stuff once you change well, it. I, I got to change my settings, you know. Wow, just default? No. Everything was SmartCast already. Oh, okay. But got then on. I also need, uh, let's see. What here. do you need? What, what's your setup? Hmm, I gotta have that soft lock. Okay, mm. all right. So, uh, Coggin obviously is a is the raider. His vitality is avarice. Uh, he is a sand pirate, I guess is the correct way. He is a sand pirate. Sand pirate, he, okay, good. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and he has a hook hand, and it's not just a tiny little hook hand. Uh, it's, it's large. It's a big hook hand. It's a Im large, imposing hook, and he uses it as his ultimate to, uh, to hook up to five people in. Well... Mm -hmm. Let me rephrase that. He can hook as many enemies as the hook will fly over into himself. That's creeps. That's jungle minions. That's, uh, you know, up to a whole team over a wall. Um, you can't hook para, obviously, because para won't move. Yep. But it is his ultimate. And, you know, um, now that you're here, uh, and, you know, we talked about it a little bit yesterday on the community catch-up, what, what was your goal putting a, an ultimate... On a, a hook on an ultimate, you know, because a lot of hooks you see from before <coughs> Pudge, Blitzcrank, Thrash, stuff like that, it's like on their queue, and it's pretty easily spammable with a 15 to 20, right. 25 second cooldown. But with Coggins Ultimate, I feel like the base is like 150, 120, something like that. Why did you go ahead and do that? It seems like a drastic change yeah. for hooks in MOBAs in general. So I actually just wanted it to feel really different. I think that a lot of hooks kind of, you know, they got like the Pudge. Um, you know, Pudge was kind of like the initial hook, so they all kind of like base off of him, and they all mm -hmm. kind of feel very similar. Some there's some ex uh, you know exceptions, but I thought bringing it to the ultimate level allowed it to be both uh, really unique, but also just like super cool and super powerful. Mm -hmm. um, being able to hook all five people is something that it's like, huge. You know, Ares has it in Smite uh, to some extent, but it's more like a, it's not really as much as a skill shot as in this, and it kind of pulls p all people into him. You know, in uh, an area, right? in an area, yeah. right? But uh, uh, so I, d I just wanted it to feel unique, but also be really, really strong, really, really powerful. It's one of the longest cooldown uh, abilities in the entire video game because it is so strong. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, one, one important thing to note about the hook is it can, and I experienced this firsthand when I first played Coggin, it can put your team in a really crappy position as well. Right. I'm pretty sure one of the first times I ever played Coggin, I pulled a really fed Volek into our team, and <laughs> we got obliterated. Right. That's like the worst possible thing you can do, yeah. right? It's not fun at all. But as far as the, the whole kit is concerned, I really like the feeling of hooking, throwing down my W, doing a Q, and landing that like large stun. Right. Um, because, you know, you can stun as many people as your cone hits with your E, and the stun duration scales with the amount of uh, spirit sands, I believe it's yeah, called. Yeah, spirit sand stacks. Uh, which you'll see kind of gathering around this mushroom uh, right here as he starts attacking it and dealing damage with his Q. Um, now, 
But the other thing is uh, that a lot of people talked about the other day was I love the crystallization effect on his E. Yeah. How hard was that to kind of get into the game? So it, it, it required a lot of tech. Um, so one of the things that kind of is more subtle about it because the crystals are so large and they're kind of like really powerful mm -hmm. uh, overall effect is that all the characters that are being uh, crystallized by the sand actually like they stop in place. Um, they are completely frozen in one animation frame, which was completely new tech for us. Mm -hmm. Um so you can stop someone like mid 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 swing, jump right. like Cerulean could could get stopped right. Cerulean can't get stopped because oh, he he's, okay. he's immune during his ultimate. Okay, um, that would have been really cool. But I want to uh, see a mid air Cerulean. Even if you get if you see a Cerulean um, using his Q ability, you can freeze him in he'll that. Stop so he'll mid, be mid mid, mid spin. Okay. And since the <clears throat> the sand kind of projects off of what their model currently looks like, you'll see like that pose kind of frozen in time as well as uh, it's kind like of being a little extended snapshot. up. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. It doesn't like it. It flows well because it doesn't like reset them to a neutral position or like a default thing. Right, you see they are frozen immediately when you use the ability. It's a cool effect. A nice yeah. touch. It's super cool. Shout it's out to the deals. Yeah, DLS and uh, I think Syph was working on the uh, uh, Waystone Flux. He was working on the uh, animation freezing. So mm -hmm. super cool tech. I loved. You know, and th this this is kind of just an inside kind of uh, look at you know things we have to deal with. I remember uh, the other week. I was playing around with Coggin because the crystal crystallization effect had just gotten in, mm -hmm. and I used it on a McKella. And it turns out when you used it on a McKella at one point, it turned <laughs> her into a giant, like screen-wide cylinder. Did right. you ever figure out what exactly was happening there? <coughs> yeah, it was actually her her coin that she uses to shoot her abilities. Uh, ooh, let's see what's going on. It right was here. crystallizing her coin. It was crystallizing the coin, which is um, for some reason was. <coughs> like scaled up 20x because I guess the original model was very tiny. It's a coin that she pulls out during her idle animation. Really? And it was just like made the you know the glass super super large and just it was hilarious. expanded. Yeah, it was funny. I'm, it glad, was that really I'm funny. glad that we caught that. It, Someone would have been really confused. Yeah, it's just it's just one of those things. You know, uh, you guys think that whenever we put stuff in, uh, maybe some of you guys are, are under this impression, maybe not. But you know, usually when we put new stuff like that uh, that in, new technology and new effects, it doesn't work for a long time. Usually there are bugs, there's craziness, uh, nothing, I feel like nothing ever goes in correct the first time. Right. That is just an impossibility. Yeah, that, that's just always how thing, things go, I think. Um, but, you know, we're always striving to put out new and awesome effects and, uh, and touches on the game. And I think that crystallization effect was probably one of the best ones. Just because I remember when I saw it for the first time, I was like, damn. Yeah. That's awesome. Super cool. That's really, really cool. And mm -hmm. it, it's cool also because it only happens when they have the spirit sands. Right. Correct? So, like, yeah. so the, just the, the someone thought. someone with your E will just kind of, you know. Exactly. So, the thought is, you know, they're covered in sand, and then sand plus fire equals glass. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing to yep. it. So, it's got a th nice thematic thing to it as well. I love it. Um, if you guys do have questions, though, feel free to ask them in chat. We do ask that you put a Q with a colon. State your question afterwards, and we will answer it to the best of our abilities. The first one I see is Zedja123. Will there be uh, there will be a Brazilian server for Dawngate? Um, we hope that there are servers for Dawngate all over the world, you know, eventually. But we're taking things one step at a time, and we do have those centrally located um, North American servers in Chicago, Illinois, for the time being. But we are we definitely want to expand. We definitely want to put servers in other regions. Uh, if there's enough demand for it, we would hope to put it uh, wherever you guys want it, pretty much. Yep. Uh, and he follows up that question with Mordekaiser S. Numero Uno. Thank you. I've heard that. I've heard that before. Way, <laughs> way, way. Something like that. I've heard about Mordekaiser. Which, actually, interestingly enough, Mr. Adam Harrington, the VO for, uh, the, for the voice artist for Coggin, is the same uh, voice artist who did Mordekaiser. Mm -hmm. So, a little bit of a similarity there. Maybe maybe Coggin is, is the new Mord. We'll see. Um, but yeah, any questions you guys might want to uh, want to ask for myself, for for Dibs here about shaper design, about what have you, about how he keeps his hair so beautiful mm. and that beard so uh, so perfectly kept, mm. please ask away. He'll ask. He'll answer just about anything. <laughs> I didn't want to say absolutely anything, right. you know, because right could be could be weird. That's when the chat gets real weird real fast. Um, so not a lot of ganks so far. Are you kind of just waiting till that six? I am, I am waiting for the six. Oh, he's got it warded, clearly. I don't know. I think you may have just caught me. Was that a blind cue? <laughs> nah. Ah. Uh, are, you, are you guys located in Illinois as well? No, we are not. We're located in the San Francisco Bay Area in California, Northern California. Uh, the servers, however, are in Chicago, Illinois. What kind of shoes are you wearing? That's a great question. What kind of shoes I'm wearing are you? some Fred Perry's. Fred Perry's? Perfect. I'm wearing some Onitsuka Tigers, uh, is what these are called. Uh, and they're fantastic. Thank you for the question. Um, do, 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 do. 
Have you thought about combining armor magic resistance into one stat or splitting penetration into two different types? So uh, that's a question from <coughs> Terret Zero. Uh, so no, the main point of having... Uh, the w what, what is important is actually that the damage is different and the resistance are different. Power, uh, having two different stats is not super important. Mm -hmm. um, it allows characters to feel... Uh-oh. Oh, there it is. Oh, into that stun. Beautiful. Oh my god, oh, okay. that's a good yeah. Dark Hex is too good at the game. You can't kill he's him. He's good, he's good. Um, having armor and magic just as two separate uh, types and magical and physical damage as two separate types uh, is what allows the ga uh, characters to feel different. <coughs> if you were able to monetize, or sorry, if you were able to itemize, monetize, monetize. monetize. If you want to deal magic damage, pay a dollar. <laughs> right. Uh... If you wanted to, if you were able to itemize them both really effectively, mm -hmm. you would be pretty effective against range shades, but you would be extremely effective against um, magic damage ca uh, uh, characters. They mm -hmm. need to be able to rely on um, characters not being able to afford those things very easily. Like if a ranged carry could afford just a little bit of magic resist, which normally they can't if they're trying to really, really carry the game, um, that would end up in an Amaranth or another burst caster not being able to kill them in their burst combo and kind of having that character fall apart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been in design decision, I believe, f f from very early on. Uh, Gasty and, and you guys knew exactly what you wanted to do with it, and and that is just how the Dawn Gate rolls. Yep. You know? um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Will the buff icons ever be different from each other? So, you know, uh, great to point that out. D Parit, or D Parrot, one of those. Um, we would love to have that eventually, yes. Um, right now, as you can see, Dibs is triple buff. Oh, got him. And nice. those three kind of spirit wolf icons um, that he just lost because he, you know, died right. um, are the same. But I believe in the future we definitely want to differentiate them, correct? Uh, absolutely. Yes. <coughs> okay. Get a little face of a little mushroom in there. Yeah, a tiny little mushroom face. Get that mushroom buff. Adorable. Um, because you know, as it stands right now, there's no readability to it. You see three spirit wolves when you're spe when you're triple buffed, and you're like, hmm, I don't know which one is running out faster. I don't know which one I'm about to lose. I don't know which one is is the longest. Stuff like that. So yep. we definitely want to differentiate those icons. Um, let's see. Uh, is there any hopes of respawning bindings to return? Um, <coughs> I don't think so. In uh, kind of. At this moment, I think we're kind of like the direction that Dongate has gone in, but we are kind of looking at. Um, <coughs> I think what people really liked about Responding Bindings was that they felt different. Yeah. Um, so we're, <coughs> we're still looking at a way to kind of keep them feeling unique. Okay. But that's okay. all I'll say. That it's still kind of in development. But it, it more than likely won't specifically be the fact that they respawn. It'll yes. be something new, something different. Yes. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely agree. That is something that the community kind of was uh, was very vocal about. They were like, man, the respawning bindings are gone. That's what made Dawngate feel special. But if we were to do a new mechanic, kind of a, a new thing that wasn't respawning, uh, you guys would hopefully feel the same way and you would still uh, enjoy the hell out of the game. Yep. Um, do, 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 do. <coughs> This is not really a question, but it's awesome to finally have a server that's based in the same city as me. Thank you, MOBA gods. You're welcome, <laughs> Interwebs. We were looking around the, the states for where to put the servers, and we were like, Interwebs is from Chicago. Boom, put the servers there. So, thank you for living in Chicago. Uh, when does the first win of the day bonus reset? So, Free Phoenix, uh, you know, great question. It's something that, um, as of now, I believe, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, rolls over at midnight PST. I believe that it does. So, you can end the game at 11.50 p.m., get your first one of the day, and then end the game after midnight and get another first one of the day. Even though, because right now, it's not calculated 24 hours after your first win. It's purely based on the PST time. Um, so, yeah, I believe that would change uh, oh in the future, but god. that's how it is right now. Oh, is that the hook? Oh my god! I don't have any focus. Oh no! Oh, oh god, I missed the stun. He does. Is this the man. worst Coggin? <laughs> block for him! No! Oh, he didn't need oh it. Oh my god. Yeah, I calculated it. I knew calculated. it. <laughs> you knew it. You're like, I don't need to block that. He'll, he'll survive all of those shots. He'll be fine. Um, let's see, other questions. Do, 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 do. What is the optimal clear combo slash loadout setup, and can you run Coggin in a lane with King of Mass at some point today? They seem like they'd have some insane synergy with ult, slows, AoE, stuff like that. So the Epic Reach, uh, Tuesday our dev playtest, we do only play one game, but you know potentially we could play something like that on Thursday or Friday whenever we do our, uh, our longer dev uh, uh, beta streams. 
Um, as far as you know, uh, optimal loadouts and whatnot are concerned, uh, Dibs, what are you running right now? What do you think is really good? Uh, so I run a mix of CDR and health regen for my jungle route. I think that <coughs> there are some other options too. I used to run Ravager Brawler quite a bit as well. What I like about health regen and uh, CDR is it lets me clear pretty quickly and stay healthy while I do it. Okay. Uh, meaning that I can get as many buffs as I want without having to worry about like having to go back to base um, before I before I move in for a, a uh, gank. Uh huh. Uh, let's see. <coughs> What is your shaper design philosophy? Like, would you make a shaper that is similar to Invoker from Dota or shy away from such complex shapers due to difficulty for players? <laughs> so that's from uh, Ryojin. <coughs> I would shy away from that, but not because of difficulty for players playing Invoker. I would shy away for shy away from it uh, for players playing against Invoker. So I think it's really fun to have a really complex shaper that you're kind of like, oh yeah, I know like all the, the meaty bits about this character and I know exactly how to use my QWER, you know, um, like Invoker obviously has a very, very high skill cap. But what I don't like about those characters is um, playing against them if you don't know the ins and outs of the kit is really, really confusing. I want mm -hmm. a character to be <clears throat> you know, relatively easy to understand based on the effects and the abilities, uh, what what to do against them or how, what they're going to do to you. And I think Evoker kind of uh, kind of kind of goes he, against he, that. He, yeah. he, he kind of pushes that. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> I saw this. I saw this on Reddit uh, earlier today. The truth, or was it the forums? I don't remember which. Uh, will the goose milking ever succeed, or are the Uggers forever doomed to failure? I don't know. Did you see that on on Reddit? I didn't see it. Somebody screenshotted the uh, the Ugger camp, and they apparently have a goose milking uh, uh, operation going on right there. Oh, actually, did they take it? Yeah, right there. There it is. That uh, Luke Illustrium, uh, our art director here, posted a concept piece that was all the kind of bits of the Ugger camp, and he labeled this thing right here as a goose milker. As a uh, blue build goose milker, so I don't know if it's going well for them. I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, <laughs> they're trying. Well, they are trying. They are resilient little bastards. I will give them that. Um, uh, how about we stop making mobas, especially ones that look almost exactly like League of Legends? So you know, uh, I I guess there's a question in there, um, but it, it, whenever you why would you ever stop making games in a genre? You know, MOBA is an entire genre, and what we're doing is trying to make a, a good one, make a good contribution to the genre as a whole. Just imagine if, you know, Wolfenstein 3D was like one of the first first-person shooters ever. Imagine if we had just stopped there and been like, well, we don't ever need another game like this. Right. Wolfenstein 3D is done. It's it. We wouldn't have had Battlefield, wouldn't have COD, wouldn't have had oh, Time Splitters for PlayStation 2, one of my favorite games <laughs> the of all time. The Halo killer. We wouldn't have Goldeneye, and Dibs wouldn't have had his Halo, which means right. he wouldn't have had his childhood. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's a genre, and we're trying to iterate upon uh, ideas that are in the genre, but also expanding upon it, such as the role system, the two-lane map, the spirit wells, um, the guardian fight, the parasite, all that kind of stuff. Yep. So, it's it's just it's it's an iterative process, uh, you know, making new games in a genre, and we just want to make a contribution to Catacid. So I highly encourage you try the game if you think it looks exactly like League of Legends. Um, personally, I don't think it does, and I'm I've been a LoL player for four years, um, but I highly encourage you to try the game. And you may do so right now if you register for the beta at WaystoneGames.com. You can use the beta code Twitch2DG, get instant access to the beta, download the less than a gigabyte uh, client, and you'll be playing the game within no time. Oh, I'm such a bad. Uh, yeah, for the most part, you are. Do, do, do. Are the bindings going to be buffed? Feels kind of weak right now. So that's feedback we actually get a lot. Mm -hmm. Hail 2411, uh, as, you know, the designer dibs. What what have you overheard or, um, or thought so about? So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things going on with the binding right now. Uh, we're looking to increase their, uh, increase their kind of responsiveness overall. Uh, <coughs> you'll just kind of see, like, you know, people get, oh, boy. People get dove and they don't really feel like they're responding in time, so they just like, you know, an, an enemy diving them will only take like one or two shots, and mm -hmm. then uh, we'll short way free. Maybe even not even that, right? All right, hang on. Can you do it? I don't know. A polymer is a pretty tanky Mara. I'm not gonna lie. I'm just gonna use my ultimate, get them in here. Get the damage. Get the damage. Get the damage and get them right in. into the vex ulti. That's yeah. good, actually. Grouping, I, I like I like the synergy. Uh, you know, just like someone I forget who it was mentioned the Oops. King of Mass ult synergy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, a hook into a King ulti into like a Vex ulti. Oh my God, the enemy team would be so <laughs> dead. It would mm -hmm. be incredible. Um, but yeah, I like little <coughs> synergies like that, and I think uh, I think Coggin brings a lot of that to the table. Like there are there are plenty of ultis in the game and abilities that are huge AOE ultis, and I think 
Coggin just sets those up so perfectly. With that perfect hook, you you could feel so satisfied just to just destroy the enemy team. Yep. You may not be dealing the damage, but you're facilitating the damage for the rest of your team. Yep. And that's the whole point. Oh, Moxie 8 and 3 while wow, he's doing it. Uh, do, 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 do. <coughs> oh, stop. You're making me blush. Thank you, Interwebs. <laughs> Hope, hopefully Chicago is fantastic for you. Um... Interesting. Uh, Valentin X is asking, do you think you'll ever put in a shaper that can potentially rebuild bindings over time? I think it would be a cool mechanic to have in the game. I, I, I actually really like mechanics like that too. They really appeal to me. But um, the reason why I would not do it <coughs> is if you have... Uh, oh my god. Ho, 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 no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, if you have kind of one of your abilities it would need to be, you know, allows you to rebuild bindings over time, that means that you are just innately less effective than uh, at an than another character at team fighting. Mm -hmm. And when I think about a character's overall effectiveness, I always have to think about um, the team fight. Okay. Uh, if you have a character that is just... Oh. Good blink over your stun there. Yeah. He's trying. We're on that W... I don't have enough focus. Oh, no. I have it now. There we go. That's that's that central slow is, is so devastating. Huge. Yeah, now it that scales it's getting level. Up, it scales with rank. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, max rank is eighty. Um, so yeah, if you have a character who has any of their abilities focused on kind of a non team fight sense, you will often find that they are just less effective than another character, and people won't pick them as often. Okay. Uh, you know, um, we have seen we have seen some interesting concepts like uh, like uh, here's the storm the. Um, uh, who is it? Abathur, you know, who Abathur, who, who doesn't cool. who doesn't directly uh, affect the battle. Well, he doesn't di he, directly affect the enemy heroes, but right. he does affect the battlefield with like mines and you know the the kind of Q mechanic of right. latching onto a, to a shaper. It's and stuff. still team fight mechanics, right? So, uh huh. Um, but yeah, that, I yeah, think that's Abathur, Abathur, Abathur is super cool, super unique. Um, do 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 do. Another question. Uh, Sheeblu Sheeps. Uh, okay, you know, uh, sorry if you already answered, but I heard the Q and W sand stacks aren't stacking together correctly. Is that going to be hot fixed or something? Yes. yes. It will be. That was an, <laughs> an unfortunate uh, side effect of another bug that we fixed, um, but it made it a little bit more obscure bug, um, but it kind of feels like it's happening all the time. Um, so we will fix it. Sorry. Yeah, it's just one of those cases I feel of you fix one thing and another thing breaks. Yep. That's just how uh, game development <coughs> works. Very true. Will the tree girl shaper thingy ever get a, get a skin soon? So Bazmin, every shaper will get a skin eventually. Yes. That we can absolutely guarantee. <coughs> so you don't have to ask about specific shapers. It'll yeah. happen whether it's soon or not. Could be another story, but every shaper will 100% have at least one skin. Yeah, that Kel skin is like my favorite skin. I love that, yeah. So far. <coughs> like that little, that adorable little roar on his W. Mm -hmm. It's cute. Um, do, 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 do. When will ducks be added? I don't know. When will ducks be added? I don't when know. Are we have there duck there was that thread about ducks. I, yeah, it was a very confusing thread. I didn't know what was going on there. Don't you know about ducks? No. Apparently I don't. What's the story with ducks? I don't know. I, well, you said it like you knew something about it. You got to have ducks. Apparently you do. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Question, question, question. I need a drink. Um... Another question, you know, uh, and, and I'll kind of say the umbrella answer uh, to this. Will there be a shaper who can put down turrets himself, kind of like Heimerdinger from League or Vulcan from Smite? So, um, as far as, like, any mechanic, like, if you ever have to ask the question, if your question ever begins, will there ever be a shaper, there could be, right? I, I feel like I'm not, I'm not wrong in saying that. There's no mechanic that you are opposed to. Correct. So, as long as it works in the Dawn Gate and it fits, and fits into the Dawn Gate and... Uh, uh, and works with all the other mechanics in the game, they will, of course, put it in the game. You know, they're not going to shy away from stealth, you know, turret mechanics, all that kind of stuff. So, just the blanket answer, if you have to ask a question, will there ever be a shaper such as blank? Yes, there could be. It's not a guarantee, but we're not opposed to it. Oh, where did he go? How do we get a key? You can use the key uh, Twitch2DG to get instant access to the beta. You can register at dawngate.com if you'd like. Oh my god. Kendra is going off the chain with ducks. Oh. <laughs> no ducks in the Dawn Gate. Just kidding. Ducks are adorable. Uh, are you guys fantastic? Answer yes. I said good day. Thank you, Thor. How are you doing, buddy? Hopefully you're having a great day so far, Mr. Thor. As long as there are two ducks to every goose to maintain balance, I'll allow it. Thank you, Jed. Thank you, Grawar. We appreciate you, uh, your, your duck to goose ratio allowance. 
Uh, T-N-B-T all back. T-N-B... I don't really know how to say that phonetically, but we'll just go with that. Do you spend a lot of time looking at other MOBAs, champs, and characters, and how much emphasis does this put on new ones in your game? It's an interesting question. Yeah, I do spend a lot of time looking at other characters. <clears throat> I like to make sure that, I mean, a lot of times I'll like, think of a character, and I'll be like, you know, oh, you gassy, I kind of want to do this, and or, you know, Scott Town, I want to do this. And they'd be like, well, it's kind of like X, X Y, and Z. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, crap, I haven't played that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to make sure that uh, I'm not doing Will the things then that they're doing. go out right? and try them? Of course. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> if I'm making something that I feel is similar to another character from another MOBA, I really, really try to go out there and make sure I play it, see if it has any, you know, um, any learnings that can be made about what, you know, eventually my idea wants to be a boy. Uh -huh. Maybe what they did wrong, what right. you could do differently, all that kind right. of stuff. Right, just kind of, you know, oftentimes you'll be like, well, I don't really like this particular part of it, mm -hmm. um, and I'm more focused on this particular part of it. Of course, we never want to like copy anything, of but course. Um, there's a lot of learnings to be had across all MOBAs. Uh, every character is a little, a little nugget of information. Yeah, you know, because if there is ever that uh, about that one champion, let's say in League of Legends, that you guys that that is is globally or universally like, I don't like this concept to be in a MOBA. You probably wouldn't want to make that same mistake. Absolutely. You know, so so <laughs> MOBA as a genre, are they're learning from each other, you right. know, and they're they're figuring out what works and what doesn't and work. It, with it's funny. Genre. Sometimes you just have to make those you make those mistakes yourself. You, you think to yourself, I could totally do it. There was a point in time when uh, the King of Mass early on uh, put a lot of invisible things all over the ground that you could step on. Uh, there was invisible stuff all over I've the heard place, about that. and it was not fun at all. It <laughs> turns out to step on these invisible mines and then get exploded and take damage. Mm -hmm. um, and that got hmm, trash. Sounds like a some <laughs> universally hated League of Legends champion. Right. And that was garbage. And even though I knew that was not fun, I still had to do it myself to see if I could make it work, right? See if I could do anything that could, uh, could kind of turn that gameplay around because it's, yeah. it's fun for the user. But it, it's it's also <coughs> a very interesting to see um, the, the iterations of certain shapers and stuff and how many changes they go through. Like, you know... There, there's a shaper. Uh, there's, there's, you know, probably a shaper in development who has changed numerous times over the course of the development. Who is still even maybe like a box man, you know, like right. one. W and and sometimes they swing archetypes entirely, which is really, really interesting. Um, there's one in my head I'm particularly thinking of, and I'm sure you could probably guess, but it. Oh yeah. They right. just have. <laughs> they're just so different, you know, from week to week, and you have to. Like, we as the developers, when we do these dev play tests and stuff, not the ones on stream, like the ones that actually have, you know, kind of box men and new bits and bobs and stuff in it, we kind of put ourselves through that, that learning experience right. so that you guys don't have to have the bad time, you know? So, <coughs> so for example, the old King of Mass, where he placed invisible mines for you to walk on, and it was very frustrating for the person playing against him. Uh, I'm sure the team the whole time was like, this is annoying, this is awful, right. this sucks. The kind of best feedback that you get is people come up, they're like, that was not fun at all. And I had zero like, fun playing against <laughs> right, that. Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, and now he's gotten to a point where, like, I love King of Mass. Right, I, think of Mass he, I think he's super unique. I think his kit is super fun and interesting. And hopefully you guys think the same way. So uh, we put ourselves through the bad time train, and then we let you guys have a fantastic time with the finished product. So yep. that's the whole point of development. A lot of the, I will confirm, a lot of the developer playtests that we play internally aren't fun you know <laughs> yeah. we don't really play it for fun and for like mmr and like raiding and stuff we play it to experience things and say like holy crap this shaper is annoying the shaper sucks the shaper is super fun you know you sometimes you get those cases of like man this shaper is perfect take him out of the oven stick a fork in him they're done yep <coughs> um do 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 God, genetic armor. Will I be able to look upskirt most of the female characters? It's a huge selling point for some of us. And Kendra has responded, yes, but they all have faces down there that <laughs> stare back at you. <laughs> Pat, make sure to put that into the game. Oh it's, a, it's a feature on every shaper. Wow. Yeah. If you somehow <laughs> manage to get your camera down there, there's just going to be a face of Patrick. A big bearded face staring back at you like, <laughs> get out of here. I'd uh, like to stop this oh, oh, train of conversation. Kendra said Bill Murray's face, to be specific. <laughs> Thank you, Kendra. We appreciate you. What do those cores do? Um, so these cores actually grant the uh, Guardian Im invulnerability. Right now I can't attack him because uh, he's invulnerable because there's still cores up. Additionally, they grant him, uh, each one grants him a different ability. So you saw him using all those big fire blasts and kind of um, reaper beams and whatnot. Uh, 
So each one time that we take one of those down, he loses one of his abilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and you do have to kill all cores to be able to damage <coughs> the Guardian. Mm -hmm. So right now, uh, Dibs' team it has gotten three out of five cores down. So the Guardian is losing three of his five abilities, and he's going to be a little bit weaker next time they go push. Those cores will respawn within six minutes mm -hmm. uh, of their death. And actually, it leads to some interesting kind of... Uh, I've had a few games that have been like, you push, you kill a few cores, maybe even all of them. And then your next push, you're trying to kill the Guardian, but you're really close to that six minute mark, and then they start respawning in, like, in rapid succession, and you're like, damn it, now we have to kill them all again. But that's the whole point. Um, all of the Guardian's abilities, including his basic attack, are skill shots. So, uh, you know, one of the changes we made to, to the new map, whenever, uh, as opposed to the old map, is because all of his abilities are skill shots, 100% of his damage is dodgeable, meaning you can end the game without a creep wave. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the big problem was in, in the old map was when the enemy had three of your bindings down, those striders were so strong that even if you did get that miraculous team fight kind of ace, you couldn't push against those really strong striders and even out the lane by getting three bindings or even taking their guardian. So. What you can do now is you can kind of backdoor. You can go past the uh, the the striders and the um, assuming they have parasite, go past the creep wave and end the game without having to push all those creeps back into the enemy base. So that's a big difference between map V1 and map V2. I need a drink. Um, do 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 do. Mars trees are still being casted even if you aim outside of her max range. Uh, I don't know if we knew about that, Deeper Eat. We would appreciate if you dropped a bug about it. Um, in the fronting client, there's a button in the top left that says submit a bug or report a bug, I believe. Nice long range hook. Um, and please let us know about it because the only way we'll find out about those things, if the QA does catch it, is for you guys to tell us. And that's the whole point of a closed beta, for you guys to help us make this game uh, as, as awesome and as balanced and as bug free as possible. Um, never 100% because that, that just doesn't fly. Um, but. As close to it as possible is what we would like. It's Waltz. Yeah. He's doing a lot of damage. He is that. doing a lot of damage, but it's all right. We got Shy Guy. Does he have that? Is, is he running that Vengeance kind of resonance thing? Or nah, no? Pain, Ruin, Destruction, oh, wow. Resonance. He hurts. He hurts quite a bit. Uh, how does Momentum interact with Kha'Zix's W? Uh, it actually... Uh, Coggin. <laughs> Uh, it actually, I think because it's an aura slow, it does not. Because you don't ever lose it. Right. Until you, well, does the, does the kind of, uh, debuff fall off, speed buff happen on slows? I thought we changed that. <coughs> Say that again? Like, okay, so momentum, if I'm, if I, it's unless I'm getting the confused. It's uh, spell shield. Oh, it's a spell shield one. Okay, yeah. gotcha. I was thinking of, of uh, stability. So I think that will not block the uh, aura application of slows. However, it will block, uh, obviously, my, my E. Additionally, uh, any ability that has multiple sets of uh, CC will, it'll block all of those. So even though Coggins ultimate applies a slow first and then it does the pull, you'll be immune to actually both those. Interesting. Um, there's a few, it's basically, you know, people holistically believe that they kind of block the ability. Mm. So if they only block one portion and it's kind of like a 2 it CC, feels bad. it feels bad, yeah. right? And it, it makes abilities like that basically completely, um, you know, they always would proc, uh, they yeah. would always pop the spell shields before getting the kind of pullback. makes sense. Yeah. Uh, hello, Blue Muzzy. He's here and coming in right, right at the end of the stream. Muzzy, where you been? Where you been, dog? Hey, buddy. Um, hello, friends and enemies. And Muzzy, <laughs> says Ouroboros <laughs> form. Nice. Um, but yeah, in a, in a few more questions from you guys. Uh, we'll <laughs> round out the stream for the day. And uh, we'll let you guys get back to playing some Dawn Gate. If you guys do want to play the game and you don't have a beta key, uh, go to DawnGate.com, register for the beta, and input the beta code TWITCH2DG for instant access. In the meantime, uh, throw a Q in the chat with a colon, followed by your question, and we'll answer it to the best of our abilities. Um... I have an unending hatred for Zalgus. When are you guys implementing a draft? Mode? It's interesting. We, we made a, a well, not a quality of life change for Zalgus, but we made a quality of life change for the game recently on Zalgus that I think kind of went under the radar because it was in the patch notes for Item Palooza, which yeah. was huge. Uh, yeah, it was really, really big. Instead of a knock up on his W's uh, augmented basic attack, it is a it's a really heavy slow. But I mean, a knock up essentially is a stun in Dongate. Um, so if you were a person with high mobility, you could get knocked up, Q, E, R, to immediately destroy it and essentially have no way to counter it other than dispel. Mm -hmm. um, having that just be a slow now allows you to use a high mobility ability if you can or just, you know, walk away also if, if you're far enough away. Um, um, 
So, sorry about your hatred for Zangus. <laughs> uh, Jackpot sometime. Jackpot eventually. Soon, TM. Uh, what is your opinion on the strength of lifesteal shapers, most specifically requiring pain to counter, which is a very expensive item? Yeah, I think that there are... Um, I think that with the implementation of Drain, uh, as well as having uh, Viana kind of having built-in lifesteal... Uh, er, and Corruption. Uh, uh, mortal and Corruption. Um, there are more options now for... Uh, for you know that mortal strike effect that allows you to kind of stop their healing. I think drain is a really good one. Most of our um, most of the shapers who have built in life steal, it's for a very particular amount of time. So like Volik, getting a drain when there's an enemy Volik on the team is like pretty essential. Yeah. But it pretty much hard counters them, and it's a pretty cheap way to do it. It also is good for almost any character drain. Obviously, being a really good uh, ability, not only deal or spell, not only, not only dealing magical damage. Mortal striking and also healing you. It's pretty much a good pickup on on anyone. Yeah, and you know, just imagine the time pre Viana drain and right. uh, and <coughs> r corruption. There was one oh. grievous wound, and right. it was it was pain, and it was fairly expensive. Yeah, with item Palooza, you have corruption, which I believe is a cheaper option. Uh, yep. I'm not a hundred percent sure than pain. You have Viana W. You've got uh, uh, you've got corruption itself. You've got drain. Uh, there's plenty of ways to apply Grievous Wound nowadays. Just imagine back then, back in the day, it was uh, not good. Finmore was uh, a little little bit bonkers. Um, let's see. Will there be another map implemented, such as a 1v1 map or an ARAM map? So, uh, Notorious997, we're not opposed to the idea of other maps, other game modes, stuff like that. It would just have to be done correctly, and it would have to be done uh, in the vein of Dawngate, rather than we don't want to just make an ARAM map, because like right. ARAM was a league thing, and it was something that... Um, that the community started doing on their own, like in custom game lobbies and stuff like that. Uh, right now, we see the evolution of like Arabs. Uh, Thor has a really stupidly named uh, a game mode where he only builds lightning items. Oh. Um, <laughs> but like you know, there, there's fun stuff like that uh, that that the community is coming up with, and you know that's where Aram came from. So we're not just going to put Aram in Dongate to have Aram in Dongate. Mm -hmm. If if something else comes up from the community that you guys really love, like the uh, the ultimate bravery mode as well, super fun. Yep. MOBA Champion actually has implemented uh, an entire page dedicated to generating those ultimate bravery builds where you hard random a shaper, you hard random an entire build, you hard random your spell selection, your your uh, ability levels, everything. So that's that's really cool, and we'll take that if it's if anything uh, from the community is successful enough and run with it. We're not going to do something just to have it though. Um, I'm not going to say it. All normal, all lightning. There you go, Forest Fox. Uh, <coughs> that's what you called it, because you're a son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> do you guys think you'll ever add items with active abilities like Zanya's Hourglass from League of Legends? So that's not, uh, that's not currently, w like, our, we, we separate our item systems in, into, if you were coming from League, we would have separated our item system into kind of our, our items, which have all these kind of really powerful passives on them that really change the way your character works. And then we have the spell system. Um, so activated things like that would be kind of bucketed into our spell system. Uh, there's a lot of different options. You can, uh, respect spells throughout the game. You get three as in, in just the course of a natural game. So we, we'd like to keep our activated abilities there. Uh, a nice little spot on the you know hot bar, and then all of our uh, items remain passive. Yeah, I, you know I really like that design choice uh, as a whole, especially as you know a, a mobile player, because <coughs> no longer would I. Uh, it's I can take stasis on anyone, you know, and that's kind of the same effect as like Zanya's Hourglass from League of Legends. But I don't have to invest three k plus gold in it for an item that may not be for my character. Mm -hmm. Like you, you don't have to buy an item specifically for its active now. Right that may not be useful to your character. It's just in the spell book. And not only is it free at levels 110 and 20, but you can respect them, uh, you know, for, for 400 vim uh, back at your locus. So I think it's a really good de design decision personally, and hopefully you guys uh, enjoy it as well. Um, the truth, the hunger tree is pretty sparse compared to the other trees. Uh, are there any plans on expanding it? I think that it is sparse as far as items are concerned, but it actually kind of, <coughs> I think with the exception of support, which um, it's questionable whether they would want... Uh, life drain or not i think that it kind of encompasses all the people that would want it i think that once we have a you know better grasp on the new item system since it's still you know relatively new to the entire community we'll look at it and say okay is there a hole there for a very particular kind of character and what can we what can we uh fill it with um let's see do 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 <coughs> we'll do like one more question if you guys would like um 
Uh, we'll take it from Blue Muzzy. Uh, crowd control equals most certain death in this game. Why would you nerf stability so hard? That's a little bit of a question for Gassy since you'd be handling the nerfs of that thing. But I think that there are a lot, just like actually the next guy says, Bronzeberry, he's, there are a lot of options for characters um, that are given to you freely in the spell system uh, that allow you to counter um, hard CC. Mm -hmm. Blitz is super strong. Dispel is super strong. Um, it works against pretty much everything in the game, obviously, besides suppression. Um, so I think that there are options, but um, that'd be a question for Gassy about stability. Um, all right, we'll just take one more <coughs> then. Uh, why do all magic resist items have a passive? Because passives are fun. Because passives are fun. Yeah. Wh why not? Is it does that tree is it better? Is that a bad thing? <laughs> right. I can't I can't tell if you're if you're saying yay or if you're saying why do they have a passive all right. grumpily. Uh, I'm not quite sure. But uh, last thing, Necrid four seventeen, will we ever be able to change screen resolution? You can. You can do it right now. You can change it right now. You can look, do it right look, now, baby. I'm even show you. Watch this. Go to game cam and go to these settings right here. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh. I think you have to be in full screen. It's incredible. To change it. Yeah, there you go. See. Uh, so you guess you can't change when you're in borderless window, but yes, you can definitely change the uh, the resolution. And with that little tidbit of information, I think we're gonna uh, <coughs> we're gonna bring things to a close. Thank you for getting a victory on Jungle Coggin today. Yeah, Hopefully, yeah, yeah, people it. enjoyed it. You had Car some sweet carried hooks. by Moxie. <laughs> uh, Moxie Garen, wherever he may be, uh, did carry you pretty hard, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll we'll say it was because of your superb jungle play and not right. because of his carry. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll say your superb jungle play. <laughs> facilitated his ability to carry. So mm -hmm. there you go. Um, thank you so much, Dibs, for coming by. We appreciate it. Thank Thanks you, all me. of you, for coming by. Uh, follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash adongate and facebook.com slash adongate. Hit the follow button on the stream. Uh, you'll get notified every time we go live. Next time we'll be live is tomorrow at 11 a.m. PST. Uh, we'll be doing a probably a viewer game for the community catch-up. So if you want to play with me, uh, please tune in then. And uh, until next time, you guys want to register for the beta, dongate.com. Use the beta code twitch2dg. Go out there, enjoy Kagan. He should be correctly on the shaper rotation, on the free rotation right now. <laughs> we did have a little a bit of an issue with that this morning. And we also have, I'll show this off for the last bit, um, that sweet, sweet Kel skin that just came out, the Altai Guardian so Kel, good. which you can't even afford right now. Look how poor Dibs is. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get some waypoints, bro. Get some waypoints. Uh, but thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. Twitter.com slash the Dawngate, Facebook.com slash the Dawngate, <coughs> and Reddit.com slash r slash the Dawngate as well. So take care, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.